good. So uh, let me uh, turn already a little bit out of out of the seat. Uh, let me try to be make this short. I'm going to tell you about some work that's been uh, going on on uh, uh, implementing density, uh, or all the density kind of things. Like, I mean, what I'm really hoping to do with this talk is to uh, spawn more interest in, in pursuing this line of work. Uh, you know, this has been done with uh, just a sort of a rather uh, small effort, and it's clear that because more of an effort is needed to sort of complete this kind of uh, line of work. But I hope, what I hope to do is to make you interested in uh, that this is something that might be worth pursuing further. And uh, this has been uh, done by uh, two brothers here, uh, Simon Friedfeld, and most of the work I'm going to talk about today as an economist uh, PhD thesis that came, uh, he finished uh, last year. And Peter Friedfeld, who's uh, sitting right there in the audience, <coughs> and uh, Hilton, who's still like, a graduate student with me, and was actually a, a master's student here at PTU at one point. And they've been at the University of Iceland working on this. Uh, I'm now spending uh, a little bit of time at Alto University, which is uh, really a, a, a true pleasure, but none of this work that's was done at Alto. Now, uh, let me just first uh, uh, run through a few issues with DTA functionals, and, and I believe that's essentially from uh, uh, issues that will be there for any uh, DTA functional. It's uh, something that has to do with the limitations of that functional form, I believe, although, of course, one can do better by, by these kinds of uh, clever uh, procedures that are being described here. And then I introduce to you uh, what we mean by ultra density dependent functional. In particular, this is the first to show the production progression. But that's one uh, particular version of an ultra density dependent functional. The, uh, the, uh, the hope here is then to uh, gain more uh, accuracy and then solve some of the qualitative problems with TTA without increasing the scaling. So that these are still methods that we see two times scales in the same way as the PTTA. Uh, there may be a bit prefactor, <coughs> but uh, uh, possibly within an order of magnitude or so, and scales the same way. So uh, the results I'm going to show you today actually have all been, uh, 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 well, most of them are uh, in, uh, obtained with this uh, code that uh, Simon and, and the help of people wrote from Quantize. But uh, there's also been an, uh, an effort to implement this in GPO. In fact, Peter is the one who has been uh, doing that. Uh, and, uh, and that actually uh, would be nice to see continue, uh, but uh, uh, maybe that's a lot of work to be done. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to talk about is actually a very simple system to begin with, because I'm going to focus on atoms uh, to begin with, and then uh, molecules, and then uh, say very little about solids actually. Now, uh, here is sort of a, a, a very nice picture that Peter made uh, many some time ago, and uh, so I think that the SI came in. Uh, sort of comparing the uh, quantum chemistry, a uh, nice uh, uh, rigid ladder up to the heavens, and then they are uh, uh, less so uh, uh, robust, uh, fancy uh, ladder here uh, on the uh, uh, more of the condensed matter side. And it's a very nice picture that Peter came up with here. So I mean, in quantum chemistry, you have a sort of clear way to the right answer. You know, you start the hard and and then you can do more configuration hard to fork, you can do perturbation theory. And CI, full CI is the ultimate goal. Uh, if you go to the complete, you know, full basis and and, uh, and all CI, then uh, you will get the right answer, right? But it's it's uh, it's uh, impossible to get to in most applications. And we're talking about scaling you know, of of number of atoms to the seventh power. If you do make some of these uh, fairly uh, uh, you know, plastic approximations here, but really it's exponential scaling. So uh, uh, on the other hand, of course, we like to be on the other side here with something that scales like MQ. Uh, we are on and GT, and then perhaps meta GT is the next trim. And then today, uh, hybrids are now considered to be, I guess, the next trim here in this uh, ladder. And uh, uh, both sort of uh, more first principles and then fitted uh, hybrid functionals. And in the chemistry community, yeah, they're, they're now sort of talking quite a lot, of course. There's almost a new hybrid functional every week. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I know perhaps, you know, up there is the lock new and so forth, but, you know, really, the question is, you know, how long can we stay with, let's say, any scaling? And is this really the next uh, logical place to go? And uh, I want to uh, put a question mark to that. Now, of course, uh, Hartley Fox will determine the uh, language here. And uh, we have in Hartley Fox the, uh, the, uh, the kinetic energy, solar energy, Hartley energy, and that's change and no correlation. And in the end, uh, this is, uh, gives us a, a, a Schrodinger like equation, one electron uh, uh, equation uh, for each so of the orbitals. And so this is a, a way of, of defining orbitals. And let's see how good Hartley Fock is. Let's look at the atoms. Because those are uh, cases where we know not just relative energies, but total energy, right? Total energy with respect to electrons uh, dissociated into the 
macro. And uh, there's a, a nice uh, set of papers by, by uh, Bernie Davidson and uh, Sata Worthy where they estimate the best, optimal, best estimates of the energy of the atoms. And uh, here is shown the, uh, the error in early electrons. You see, error in the energy, energy uh, of the atom, uh, total energy of the atom, divided by the number of electrons uh, from hydrogen up to iron. And uh, you see that the error here in half the fourth is really quite enormous, right? One EV per electron. Let's check out the error. <laughs> and, uh, however, what is very, very nice uh, of, of Archimonte is, first of all, it gives pretty good structures. That's the first thing that you learn. But another thing is that uh, even though it gives a, a very poor estimate of the total energy, orbital energy has actually come out reasonably well. So here's the homo. And uh, uh, comparison here with the, uh, with the uh, uh, ionization energy, and uh, you know it's within 10%. And this is not just for the whole, but even for the lower orbital, so photo electron spectroscopy, so it's quite well uh, predicted by Hatchford. So this is why, uh, in some cases, when one sees in, in textbooks, like uh, textbooks like Macquarie, orbitals are real. <laughs> because the, uh, the uh, uh, orbital energies in Hatchford are not being very good estimates of photo electron uh, spectroscopy. Now, uh, what happens when you go to, uh, to DFT? And uh, of course, then uh, you go to LDA first and uh, see what the energy per uh, uh, electron in the atom actually is quite a bit bigger, it goes up to two. So, uh, you know, it's really quite, it's, it's, it's just, uh, even worse than half the one. But uh, when you introduce the, uh, the gradients and then go to PBE, let's say, there is in fact a, a, a very nice improvement in the energy per electrons. And uh, uh, that's the, uh, the blue line here, I guess, yes. And, uh, and then uh, when you go to the hybrids, uh, you go to PPE zero, you see there's only a marginal improvement, so extremely, uh, very insignificant improvement in the total energy of the, of the atoms. But anyway, the, going to the gradients, yes, the uh, total energy is improved significantly. The bad news is that the orbital energies are now no good. So here's the, uh, uh, the uh, ionization energy, and uh, it's off by 40, 50 percent. And you know, if you saw that Hartley Fortunes gets it right, uh, PPE is way off, so hybrid functional PPE is zero, which has what is it, 20 or 25 percent Hartley Fortunes, I forget. But it's only going to mix in a fraction of the right answer, so it only gets partially towards the right answer. A hybrid function will never get it right. <coughs> so this taking some that's wrong, and this taking some that's right, only a little bit according to the rest of zero and one, right? So, uh, and this is not just the, uh, the uh, ionization energy, this goes for the other uh, orbital energies as well. So, the good news is that the total energy is improved uh, in GTH, but the, the orbital energies are no longer meaningful. And, uh, and of course, this is uh, uh, not related to why the band gaps are not meaningful and so forth. So, uh, there's a whole list of other things that uh, are actually. Uh, uh, one would like to be able to have better, both in GTA and, and, and also in the hybrids. One is the fractional charges when the ions dissociate. If you pull out a, a fluorine atom out of a, or, uh, of a CF4 minus molecule, you get a fluorine with a charge of minus uh, 0 0.6 or something like that. You get these fractional charges. And that's true of hybrid functions as well. We know for uh, uh, calculating uh, reaction barriers and so forth, DTF uh, typically underestimates, systematically underestimates uh, reaction energies, uh, activation energies, and uh, so forth. There's a problem with the ionization uh, 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 potentials and, 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 and so forth, band gaps. And then the other issue is, well, what do you want to get out of a calculation? You want to get more than just numbers, you want to get also qualitative information about, for instance, chemistry, chemistry or surfaces or whatever. And one would like to get meaningful orbitals. The fact is that these uh, orbitals that come out of the hard to fog or, or DJ are not very meaningful. They are, tend to be these big localized orbitals, very different from at least what chemists uh, brought up uh, thinking about, really localized orbitals, uh, uh, hybrid orbitals, and so forth. They can get none of that from hard to fog or DJ. Now, uh, uh, looking at some uh, of these issues, for instance, here is uh, uh, sodium chloride, just one atom of sodium, one of chlorine. When you pull them apart in PBE, you end up with sodium plus uh, 0.4 and chlorine is minus 0.4. That's just an illustration of the problem with the uh, dissociation. And here with PBE 0, yes, it improved a little bit. In hard to you, you would actually get uh, neutral. Uh, and, uh, and so here you're getting a fraction to the, to the uh, proper answer. 
Then take just a simple system, H2 plus one electron. When you cool it out, you actually get uh, at least an uh, uh, underestimate here of the energy, again, because of charge of the localization. There are many other examples. Uh, one is here, uh, this recent uh, paper by uh, uh, Parker Group, uh, Alchemy. Uh, PV gets this uh, structure wrong. So here is actually not the energy, but the, the structure is wrong of this, model, of this uh, radical here. Uh, it turns out to be right in PB0, however. Uh, now, here's an example. I was expecting Kuzvak to be here, but anyway, I saw this like always anyway. But this is a very nice uh, 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 issue that uh, Kuzvak pointed out more than 10 years ago. If you, if you uh, make a, a substitutional uh, a defect in, in quartz, you put in a lunar atom instead of a silicon atom, you actually get a fairly localized pole. You put in an atom with three valence electrons and take out one with four, so there's a pole here and sitting on an oxygen atom. Then a simple oxygen atom in advance. And only one of the aluminum oxygen bonds is lengthened. However, when you do this calculation with PPE, you'll get a spin density that's distributed on all four of the oxygen vapors to the aluminum atom as well as on more distant atoms. And all four of the aluminum oxygen bonds are lengthened. So this is again an illustration of the the tendency of heating to be localized, be localized, be localized, be localized uh, charge. So the, uh, uh, and here is of course the uh, Consam uh, EFT thing, uh, the uh, kinetic energy external energy, and here is the heart energy, and this is the way the heart energy is estimated. You, uh, you calculate the uh, integral of row space of the total of density, here you line up the point R and R prime, and divide the distance between the Coulomb energy, Coulomb interaction of an electron cloud with itself. And that appears uh, with the so-called self-interaction error. Now, I hope this, of course, that uh, the, uh, this is uh, whatever got swept under the rug, right? After writing down these uh, three terms <coughs> here, and that should be fixing all the problems, and it doesn't quite, that's the problem. We have a self-interaction error in this, which isn't quite cancelled out properly in the exchange correlation function. Now. We write this out differently. What one really should do, if these, if these orbitals are meaningful, so that they're actually describing how each electron is being distributed. Then the orbital densities are telling you what the probability density of is for each of the electrons, right? Then the proper way to calculate the Coulomb interaction between the electrons would be the, the uh, uh, double sum excluding the, uh, the diagonal term. So you don't let the orbital I interact with itself, but only uh, distinct orbitals here, right? That would be the better way of, of writing the energy density if these orbitals in fact be what we do instead, however, in both Hartree Mott and in, in uh, constant EFT, is to do this, uh, in a sense, include the diagonal term here, rho i and rho i here again. Then it can be written in terms of the total level density, and one should then, to gain this expression, uh, subtract out the diagonal term. So that's a kind of a self interaction correction. Let's say you do it first this way, and then you subtract out the diagonal term, so you make a self interaction correction to remove what you shouldn't have had here. This happens automatically in Hartree Fock because the exchange term actually has exactly that same term here but the opposite sign, so, or with the minus sign. So you do get this constellation in Hartree Fock. Indeed, there's some of that constellation but not, not fully. So we end up with a max subtraction. Now, uh, uh, even so, I mean, this is most obvious that you have a system of a single letter, right? Because if you have a single letter, H2 plus, you have some electron electron interaction. Really, that's wrong. And uh, uh, the heart may exchange the correlation and of this would be zero. And uh, one can uh, then uh, say that uh, an exact exchange function of should uh, be exactly minus the heart density for this density of the single electron and correlation of zero. And so uh, one can see that the uh, way to fix that, if you have a system with only one electron, is simply this. Uh, this uh, uh, correction, you, you will see what does the exchange correlation function give you for the electron density for that one electron, and uh, add that to the half energy, and that should be zero. If it's not, you subtract it, and that actually gives you a uh, regular self interaction correction, but only in a system for one electron. Now, if you uh, go back to H2 plus, yes, that was great. You get the right association. Now, uh, Perdue, some more than 30 years ago, said, okay, it works for one electron systems, let's apply it to many electron systems too, <laughs> right? So uh, uh, orbital by orbital, evaluate what would the exchange uh, correlation function give you when you plug in, uh, you know, orbital after orbital density after orbital density here, 
and uh, uh, evaluate this uh, diagonal term in the two and the hard free term. See to what extent they uh, cancel out. If, if this turns out to be zero, you're fine. You don't have, have uh, any correction. But normally, this is not going to be zero. And this do subtract this and from whatever is your uh, density. Sorry, this would not be extensible. This would be the total energy. This would be the total Calculate uh, this uh, the sum over orbitals of uh, the correction to the uh, heart energy and the correction, and essentially to what extent is the uh, exchange correlation functional you've got going to be uh, cancelled this out. And compare this to this is an orbital by orbital correction. So uh, this is just a single sum here. Compare that with the heart rate for a double sum and many more terms. In principle, this is, is not increasing the scaling of the computation. However, it does uh, complicate things quite a lot. And uh, we can talk about that later. But let's look at how this does. So let's so 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 Simon and Peter worked on, on implementing this, and they really did a, a good job. They implemented it self-consistently. Many of the applications of self-interaction correction have been perturbative. This is self-consistent, and uh, 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 they got an, an, a code, uh, well, a Gaussian-based code actually from scratch, the Zoe letter. And uh, look at the beautiful results. Uh, here was what we had before. This is, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, PBE, <coughs> uh, PBE zero, right? And it was coming down a lot. Oops, and here is the uh, self interaction corrected energy. Right. After all that work, it actually is worse than uh, not having any correction. And uh, fortunately, we didn't know about this, but we still have uh, already published this. Right? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is what we're doing. So, no, but then you have to figure this out, actually. Peter has a uh, background in, in nuclear physics. And, and People are not using real orbitals very much, but not as much as in chemistry at least. And uh, these calculations were done with real atomic orbitals. And when they try complex orbitals, aha, then the energy actually did drop by applying the self interaction reaction. So and the, the conclusion is that it really is essential to use complex orbitals when you are, are, are using orbital density dependent functions. It breaks all kinds of symmetries, and, 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 and in, in particular, this is. Uh, uh, one that has to be uh, done. So this was this was under in, in uh, 2011. Now uh, uh, the uh, orbitals also are directly coming out to be, uh, for instance, ST hybrid orbitals. Mm -hmm. So if you get uh, in a neon atom here, uh, these uh, ST3 orbitals. Uh, here's what they look at. They look like if we have these real orbitals. Now if you get complex, of course you don't have any uh, way of, of Illustrating here phase changes, but uh, here is uh, here is the, uh, the magnitude of the uh, complex orbital of, of one of the uh, atoms. Now uh, let's look at orbital energies. The nice thing is that not only is the, the total energy improved, but also the orbital energy. Here's the home law, the relative error in home law, and you see that it's uh, now as good as hard to fault. So now both total energy and orbital energies are improved, and that's not only for home law but also for for the lower ones. And uh, Homo minus one, homo minus two. So this uh, then uh, brings back the meaningful orbital energy. Now uh, this can strongly affect the uh, the uh, bond energies also. And uh, here, let's say we look at just the three of them. I'll show you another slide that many more. But if you start with the table here, here's a, a, a well-known troublemaker, O2, which has an experimental bond energy of five and a quarter electron volts. And this is, of course, way off in LTA. And PPE is off by one EPV, as well as we probably all know or should know at least. And uh, now the problem is that uh, when you apply SIG uh, to the PPE, it, it's just as bad, but it's in the opposite direction. You actually get some like hard to clock number. It's uh, underestimated by an EPV, whereas in PPE, it's overestimated by, by an EPV. And uh, this uh, uh, was done now for uh, many more molecules, uh, about 17 of them, as I recall. And the optimization energy is calculated, and uh, uh, and then this is shown here in two different ways. There's the mean error, which is uh, you know could be zero, but it could still it simply means that you have as many plus and as minus errors. And then there's the mean absolute error that's coming about the distribution. And that's shown here for several functionals. And as you can see, that yes, uh, for for LSD for for uh, low density approximation, uh, it does improve things to uh, to. Uh, uh, by the sake, but it's not strong enough. You know, here's the right number, and uh, you, the mean error is really not getting close to zero, it's about it's half the other wall. Uh, here is PBE, and uh, what happens when you apply a sick, whether it's complex or real, 
uh, you go way over, or you get even more with the real uh, presentation, with the complex, you're just about on the other side of the line here, over, uh, for example, uh, yeah, 100%. Now, look at the, here with the DLIP, you know, the, the whole correction is even worse, and so, you know, you see that the uh, self interaction correction is not necessarily a correction. <laughs> Sorry. Shouldn't they call that? Uh, here's TB0, P3, I like to know. That's the kind of function I said, you know, this is the kind of function that can be like. Okay, so uh, what can be done? Uh, at this point of stage, I mean, not much perhaps, but uh, we, a long time ago, so we were sort of playing with a little bit, you know, well, if it's, if it's uh, you know, 100% too much correction, that's scale it by a half. And this actually was, uh, was uh, 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 pursued by the Scusari and the co-workers in a, in a more adapted uh, way. But, uh, Look, uh, if you if you do scale it by half, uh, then uh, yes, you get, you get something that actually is a reasonable bond density here, and uh, but not for the BLITs and so forth. So I mean, clearly, it's very strongly dependent on the exchange correlation functional whether it makes sense to construct an order density dependent functional in this way, and and and, and don't follow the correction. Okay, but you know, it, it does do a lot of things actually amazingly well. So here's a. Uh, uh, this molecule that turned out to have the wrong structure, and yes, uh, by applying, you know, whether it is full uh, SIP or half SIP, it, it, it fixes the, uh, the uh, uh, this uh, artificial minimum here that comes out as a function of the angle for the in the TBE. And uh, here's another people that uh, uh, pointed out, actually, Kramer and Kovacher in, 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 uh, in Germany had pointed out that with SIP, you get the wrong uh, structure for this uh, uh, methyl. I think this is methyl, but it's not. Uh, and uh, it turns out that if you, that's, that's a problem with the real uh, uh, implementation. If you get the complex, and you, you, it's okay. Now here's this uh, this uh, stock growth uh, uh, thing, and uh, this actually was done some time ago. Uh, yes, you get uh, 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 you know only one of the uh, the aluminum oxygen atoms uh, is lengthened, and in fact it turns out to, to agree very well with, with uh, uh, spin resonance and resonance. Another very nice thing about this other interaction correction, if you can call it that, is uh, that the, uh, the long range tail of the potential actually is fixed. You actually do get one of our dependence as, you put, as an electron moves far away from uh, the uh, others and the other nucleus. And this means that uh, one can start to calculate, uh, for instance, the uh, referred excited states of molecules. And we turn out to have a collaboration with an experimentalist, Peter Weber at Brown, who's measuring referred states of large molecules and wanting to pursue that as a a chemical analysis technique, but you know, if when you apply uh, the standard quantum chemistry methods to uh, you know these excited uh, molecules, and they are huge. You see, the, uh, this is the, here are the atoms. The uh, extent of the electron in an excited state of this uh, trimethyl amine uh, is just the first, uh, you know, first or second excited state. It's huge. You know, so generating a Gaussian basis set for this is a difficult challenge, and then uh, carrying out these high-level calculations for this is, is, is not you know. These people have not done uh, uh, excited state calculations of a molecular state uh, uh, with the standard methods that actually are any good. When uh, 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 this is how we've done with the, uh, so we do the two step procedure, we, we estimate the, uh, the excited state with uh, the, uh, the, the PBE SIP, and then we uh, uh, freeze the electron there in, in a delta SCF calculation to get an improved energy for the for the, uh, for the, uh, the weaker electron or the excited electron. This is coming out to often uh, within 0.1 EV, a typical error of, of a DFT calculation. And it really opens the door to do <coughs> excited state calculations of the molecules in a totally different way. With a condensed matter code, uh, grid space, no Gaussians, and uh, DFT with this uh, self induction correction rather than this uh, uh, quantum chemistry method. So, uh, what about the, uh, the uh, methodology? Well, it's, it's uh, the, uh, the thing is that the well, one reason this hasn't really been done uh, extensively is that the implementation of this is, is tricky. And uh, one, it really requires uh, different uh, uh, or extended numerical uh, um, procedures to do this. It's no longer an economic problem. Now you have uh, a different Hamiltonian sensing for different functions for different orbitals. And uh, one is, uh, has to solve uh, the, and sense these uh, two uh, equations here, where this is the uh, uh, the uh, energy and the uh, of normality constraint here, and uh, or one can write this in terms of this uh, set of orbital equations here and the, uh, the uh, secondary uh, constraint that the, the constraint makers with the Hermitian. 
And uh, the thing is that you get a similar kind of uh, type of equations in, in, in quantum uh, PFT or, or Hartree Fock, but there you have the uh, luxury of choosing your orbitals anywhere you like. There's a new internal invariance. You can take any linear combination of orbitals and get still the same total energy, whether it is in Hartree Fock or, or quantum PFT. And then you choose that particular linear combination, which takes this from being coupled to these uh, lambdas here to something that is only a time or gives you a nice uh, eigenvalue problem. So uh, you choose uh, the linear hooks, you choose the uh, part, particular hooks, particular uh, set of, of, of orbitals to give you these one in that equations. Now you cannot do it anymore. It is, now you do not have unitary invariance because you have this orbital to orbital correction which makes the uh, Hamilton in a sense the orbital dependent. And that's bad news. It's bad news for the uh, optimization method, right? Which you have to do something much harder than an eigenvalue problem. The good news is, because you get unique orbitals. You don't just get some space of orbitals, which allows you to get, get uh, the annual uh, linear combination. You get particular orbitals, where they are correct or not. At least they are particular. And uh, uh, Peter and Simon have worked on this hard, and, uh, and uh, implemented this, and uh, here is a comparison uh, with uh, the previous sort of optimal method that Berger and uh, Umerica had for this, but uh, their method actually is, is converted in much, much, much faster. However, there are still issues and, and problems, and uh, uh, I'm not saying this is uh, the, the final uh, thing at all. Very important thing was to, uh, to uh, actually uh, build in the uh, uh, orthonormality constraint uh, so that one was moving in a, in a unitary optimization of the of the linear combination on the sphere. So basically, let me not get into this uh, in much detail, but you know, in the uh, usual algorithm, then one has to insert a, a new step, which is uh, find which linear combination of orbitals which should be optimal orbitals. That's the key thing: is to have this extra uh, intermediate uh, thing here, and uh, that certainly slows things down quite a lot, but uh, uh, not not overwhelmingly, and, and the scaling still should be uh, and group, uh, similar to uh, what is uh, in uh, uh, normal DTA. So uh, there are several good uh, aspects of this. Uh, this this uh, the good scaling. There are good. Uh, there are, you get localized. Typically, you get localized uh, uh, reference space orbitals. Uh, typically, hybrid orbitals come out directly. Uh, there are improved uh, total energy as well as uh, single particle energy or orbital energies. And, uh, and uh, this improves, you know, you, you don't have to do afterwards some kind of a, a transformation to not or something like that to try to interpret this. This would really come out with the right orbitals. Now, uh, I think, you know, one still, there's still, a, there's still issues with the, uh, you know, efficiency of the minimization uh, algorithm. There can be several local minima. Now, one is back into these kinds of problems that have to podcast that, you know, there's not just one local minimum. I mean, in a sense, DFT and the LTA or GTA approximation is remarkably simple in that there tends to be just one global minimum. One minimum, this is a global minimum, unless you have uh, magnetic states. But uh, here things uh, get more, uh, more uh, complicated. But I would say, I think, I hope, you know, this, these uh, results have showed you show that, you know, there are some a new sort of qualitative features brought in by having this orbital interdependence. And it, it could be uh, pursued and, and uh, one could hopefully build actually uh, a, a better function. One then really has to build up a new function for, for this. Uh, it's clearly not good to just apply it to some functions. It depends you know, very strongly on which function you apply it to, whether it makes any sense or not. And really what one should say is that now if you have uh, self-interaction free heart, then you need to develop a new exchange correlation to go with that. Now, uh, uh, but you know, I have hope that uh, I have stimulated uh, some your curiosity at least and, and, and perhaps willingness to, to to uh, think and, and, and work on this. Uh, this is, I believe, a, a, a better alternative to hybrid functions. Hybrid functions simply do not make any sense. That's what to say. It's just mindless fitting of two things that happen to have opposite sizes of errors yeah. and they will do something to, to test them out. And you see that for several properties, you will never get them, you know, because hard, if hard to gets it right and DTA is wrong, more hybrid functions will get it right. So, I think this is a much more uh, uh, physically uh, uh, sound approach to try to improve things. And uh, in fact, it may actually uh, 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 yeah, even, even uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, as good or maybe better uh, results than high functions, both for total energy and ionization potential and all the work 
However, it's clear that uh, one needs to use complex weight functions, and Peter has uh, well, spent quite a lot of time uh, uh, working on with Deepo to, to introduce complex weight functions. I think now that's more easier than it was uh, when he was starting to do this with uh, the structure has been changed somewhat. But uh, uh, what is needed here for further development is, is clearly you know, construction of a, a new exchange correlation function that is consistent with the self interaction free hierarchy. And, and then, of course, uh, if one would need uh, new uh, PHW uh, setups or projectors, uh, one cannot use, and, and, and that can be clear, one cannot use just the PB. I mean, these functions, these wave functions are quite different, and one cannot use a PB setup for, for PB SIG calculation. Uh, there were uh, errors of about half an electron volt on some bond energy when compared to low electron. And uh, there are issues with size consistency also. Uh, whereas that, uh, this, this uh, tends to be not size consistent and therefore uh, hard to apply to both systems actually. And, uh, and then I think actually there still is uh, some room for improving the, uh, the minimization algorithm. But anyway, let me, let me uh, uh, hope I can leave you with a, a positive uh, at least curiosity towards this kind of approach and uh, consider that uh, this might be a way uh, to, to pursue. Thank you. One or two quick questions, so people got it correct. So, uh, in the uh, in the EFG function uh, gap, problem is that there's a fundamental gap and there's an optical gap, and there's a discontinuity that has to be there as you go across from, from one side to the other, removing the particles and adding them. Mm -hmm. uh, can you interpret the need? I mean, is it so that you can interpret the switch? Complex wave functions in terms of, of uh, I mean, you know, I mean, the, the framework that people in the EFT says has to be solved is this discontinuity problem, and now you've solved it in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, are the two related? Well, uh, Peter, you want to answer that? Uh, just try. Second first. Second? Try first. Yeah, no, I mean, there's now, I mean, you have a different thing for the occupied and unoccupied. Yes, and so I think that's a key. That's a key issue. I'm not sure that this is directly related to the problem or the uh, the need for going complex. Uh, the need for going complex is, is more uh, to have full flexibility in, in representing not just the full density but the orbital densities and the relative position of the orbital densities. You need that uh, uh, you know complex functions to have that full flexibility. Now, the reason I'm so, 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 so there's been a recent reinterpretation of this problem with the curvature mm -hmm. in terms of the issue of actually adding and removing electrons, sort of in terms of recruitment and yeah. what is this Yannick theory. Yeah. And that actually, that actually leads to another problem that I'm very interested in, being the fact that the ground state DFT that we have today, the, the one that's not orbital based, actually is a very poor idea for a Yannick DFT. So mm -hmm. if you want to go to the, six, the, the 65 version, the you know, Mervyn's version of this, you have to add and remove electrons, mm -hmm. you know, because you're creating all sorts of mm -hmm. so, so I'm very interested also in the next question. And when you are adding and removing electrons, you are, you are building in and you have open boundary conditions and you cannot get around the fact that the wave function now has to be complex because, you know, you have, a, you have an inherent complexity in the wave functions because they can now be trapping away, which they did not have to be when you didn't have that open boundary condition. So I think that the, I think there is a link. Uh -huh. And I would like to work out what the link is. Okay. But I, what I'm trying to say is, and I think that these things here would be fantastic also to try for thermodynamics, the of chi calculations, which there really hasn't been very much of. What do you mean by thermodynamics? What I, what I mean is that the Kongshan construction as we do it today is actually enforcing the fixed number of particles in the inner cell. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the Mervyn's theory, the Mervyn's theory yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is a way there has been constructions yeah, yeah. of these things. And I've never seen any of them really being very well. Mm -hmm. And so, with yeah, with, with, with all, the, yeah. all the problems with the practical thing. Yeah. And, and that, you know, and it fits well with the thing that we're always saying, well, with DFT, what we're doing is we're creating two holes and then we're not creating the difference between the two. Well, I'm glad to see that at least one person is excited. Great, <laughs> 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 No, that's very Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>